that was our warm up, and we're going to use these skills in a question like this, right? We're going to look at um, two families of curves this morning, um, kind of. The first one is is cubic curves. Cubics are kind of like the natural extension. Um, in your seven and eight, you learn about straight lines and y equals mx plus b, and then further on, you learn about quadratics. And we learn, we spend a lot of time on quadratics even this year. Cubics are the next power up to the power of three. Okay, so they're a natural next place to go. Now, when you have a look at this, sketch the graph of this. It's a bit of a, well, it's a bit of a dog's breakfast. It's a bit of a mess. It's like, how do I even start with this? I could pop points in there. I could make a huge table of values, but that would really suck, right? That would be a very inefficient way to do it, okay? So what I want, what I want is to factorize this, okay? So I'm going to give you uh, a series of steps. We'll, we'll, we'll write it as I go on the side, and then we'll, we'll summarize it all together. But my first thing is I want to factorize, okay? Okay, factorizing is always a key step whenever you're trying to graph something. And here's the reason why. Don't write this part down, but when you get a normal quadratic, like say this, right? Most of us, I mean, you guys are sick of this quadratic now, but most of us can't just, oh yeah, I know exactly what that looks like. Factorizing though, helps us know where the features are, okay? So when we factorize this with the factorization that we're so very familiar with, that factorization tells us, oh, there are some important features and I can literally read them <coughs> off this line, right? What does this line tell us about? It tells us two key features. The it tells me about the x-intercepts. We also call them roots, don't we, right? Where that graph is going to hit the x-axis. They give two and they give three. Now, if I can do that factorization thing for this, then I can also know where the roots are, right? And there's going to be more. There's going to be three rather than two, but I can still find their location, okay? So here's what we're going to do. How do I factorize this thing? I don't have a cubic formula. There is a cubic formula. Um, I will show you in a minute because I've got it loaded on my computer. It's terrible. If any of you have looked it up, you looked at it and think, why even bother, okay? So therefore, we're going to take advantage of this stuff that we know here, right? You remember using the remainder theorem? There's a special case when the remainder is zero. What's it called? It starts with an F. Because of what we're looking for. It's called the factor theorem, right? It's when we're looking for factors, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug numbers into this thing, just like the remainders here, until I get what what am I looking for? Zero. I'm looking for zero, because then it's like, oh there's no remainder. I can actually divide through. Okay. So I generally start with the first number I start with is one. Okay, I'll just go to test it out and see what happens, okay? So one cubed is one. Uh, one squared is one. Six times one is, well, it's six, and there's eight on the end, okay? Uh, what's gonna happen out of this? One plus eight is nine. Minus three minus six is yeah. minus nine, so nine minus nine is zero. Now, this was not a coincidence, okay? I, I crafted this cubic specifically so it would do this. You might not be so lucky, we talked about this before. You might try this out and then get some ridiculous number, like minus 71, in which case, you keep going, right? Um, generally speaking, and there's no hard and fast rule on this, but I would test out the numbers in order of size. I would try at one, and then I would try at two, um, then I would try at negative one, at negative two. They could give me roots as well, okay? Generally, questions you're expected to do by hand, they'll never really do one further than this, because otherwise, like, we're just wasting your time, really, okay? So, ta-da, we've got one. I've used the factor theorem. If f of one is zero, What's the resulting thing that's an actual factor? What's the x minus something that's a factor of my polynomial? One. It'll be x minus one, very good. So from this, since f of one is zero, I would say, this is part of my working, right? Therefore, x minus one, whatever that number is, is a factor. If I had tested f of two and that was zero, I would say x minus two is a factor. If I've tested f of minus one, and it was zero, I would say x plus one is a factor. You can see there's always this flipping around thing. So there can be more factors. Oh, I expect that there are more factors. In fact, if I've done this right, there should be two more factors. We're about to find them, okay? So now that I know this is a factor, I'm gonna divide through, okay? And that will give me a further factorization. So let's start our synthetic here. Um, I've got one out the front, and then I'm gonna write down my coefficients, right? One, negative three, negative six, and eight. You see how all these skills build upon one another? This, this question never asked us to do any polynomial division, but you kind of have to in order to make some ground on it, okay? Okay, let's do this one quickly. I'm gonna write down the leading coefficient, one, 
and then I'm going to do my multiply, multiply and addition. Okay, so multiply, add, uh, multiply, this and add. Last one, so multiply and add. That's a relief. What's that zero mean? It's remained zero, so it's a factor. Perfect. Okay, I take these numbers and again I interpret they're the coefficients, right? X squared minus two x minus eight. So having just divided through, remember I divided by x minus 1 and what I ended up with was this. Okay. So therefore I can say, therefore, f of x, that thing I started with, that function, is equal to the divisor times the, what's it called again, that thing you end up with? Starts with a q. Quotient. The quotient, very good. So x squared minus 2x minus 8. Now the great thing about this is, I turned my cubic problem, gross, into a quadratic problem. Look at this guy. I can do this. What pair of numbers will add to negative 2 and multiply to negative 8? Negative 4 and 2. That'll do it for me, right? So this is going to be x minus 1, x minus 4. There's the negative 4 you told me about. And x plus 2. Ta-da! We factorised the lot. That was really, really good. Okay? Uh, this process was hard. But it yielded a result which we could then deal with in our normal quadratic like tools and stuff like that. So great, I've done the first step, I have factorised, finished.